Well, I was born in Boston, um, and I went to Park Board School, and from there, well, I was there till I was 14, and then I left, and I had a little job in a little tobacconist shop, and then my cousin worked on Wigsley Aerodrome and doing war, and uh, she asked me, well, my parents, if I could go, and I went, went and when I was 15, I worked, went and worked up in the canteen uh, on the aerodrome, and I lasted there about 12 months. And then I went home, and then I was an apprentice hairdresser, and that was uh, 1945. And then the war finished May the 8th, 1945, and uh, in the July, I went to a, a dance at the Gliderdrome in Boston and a load of Australian airmen came down. They came from Bimbrook and they came down to East Kirkby and they were in, they just hit, hit the town that night and there was about six of them. And uh, I was going home to get the bus and this young gentleman said, can I have a dance with you? I said, no, I haven't got time, I've got to go and get a bus. He said, is it far? And I said, no, just in the marketplace. And he said, well, just have a dance with me. He said, no, I'll, I'll walk you to the bus. And so I did. I had a dance with him and I walked him to the bus. And that was on July the, th the 30th, 1945. And that was a Monday night. And on the Wednesday night, he said, oh, and he couldn't remember whether he said he was going to meet me on the Wednesday night or the Friday night, so we turned up both nights. And, uh, and then we just kept seeing each other, apart when he was going overseas to pick up prisoners of war. And from there, he, I took him home, and uh, he had a few days leave while he was staying, spending. But uh, I only knew him three months, and he was going to come home. So he asked me to come to Australia. And I didn't know what, so then he asked my mother if he could get engaged to me. So that was only three months after. I was only 17. And then he uh, was coming home, and the boat broke down, so he came back. And he said, uh, and we thought he'd be in England for the Christmas, but he wasn't. He was, and he wasn't home in Australia either. He was in the Suez Canal on Christmas Day. But the boys I met, the night I met him, well, I still kept in contact with. Uh, no, Twelve months after I came to Australia, went to Australia, and uh, I still kept in, in contact with the boys, or my husband did, and I knew the boys before even their wives did, and. Uh, Right up now, there's still one of them that I rang just before I came here now. But anyway, I was in Australia for three weeks and we got married. And uh, I didn't know anybody at the wedding, only my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, two brothers and sisters. And then after that, we, well, we, he worked in, a, in the Commonwealth Bank. And then we started having a family, and I had a, 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 a girl, a son, and a lovely daughter over there. <laughs> he had a big job in the, the Commonwealth Bank, and uh, from there we just kept on going here, there, and everywhere. And came to England. He came in 1982. He came on a, a reunion, and. Uh, he was taken to Coningsby, the three of them were taken to Coningsby, my husband and two of his friends, and they put them in flying suits and they flew them back on the Lancaster to Bimbrook. And everybody was surprised when they all, when they stepped out of the aircraft on the runway. And apart from that, we've had a very happy life and we, he got sick then, only the last, what, five years? Five, Six years, Janine? Five. Five. Unfortunately, after 67 years of being married, which would have been 69 this year, 
but it's 70 years in July since I first met and we thought this was a great opportunity to come back and all the states contributed and sent money over for the, to keep the upkeep of it. And my husband worked for Secretary of 460 Squadron for over 30 years, which he was awarded an OAM, Order of Australia Medal, for his work that he did with the 460 Squadron. And his whole work, and he, with other, you know, with the other committee, that they just kept it all together for over 30, 32 years which they now disbanded and five of the, uh, five of the children, uh, some of them that were, you know, they had to be either daughter or son and five of them have started the 460 Squadron Veteran and Friends and they put out the bulletin now, my daughter is, helps with the bulletin but she keeps them hopping and uh, They've uh, really put it together and they've kept the 460 Squadron going still all over the world with their texts and the bulletins that they put out every three months. Every three months they put them out and they just record. But last year with our big year, 14 of the Squadron fellows passed away. Beginning the 1st of January to, and the last one we buried, well, the two days before Christmas. But we know all, you know, a lot of them, and some of them, uh, people that we've met today, we're still friends with uh, the talents who we've met their son and daughter in law today because he lives here and we knew that he was here but we had to find him but he found us. Mm. And we're still friends with the, a lot of the people that are still alive, but not many of them left now. And some and a lot of photos are up in the auditorium. It was good to see them all. And when the boys used to have their meetings in Mountain Play, we uh, the wives they used to go off to their meeting and the wives and we formed a coffee club. And we all the girls used to go and have their coffees till the boys were in their meeting and then they used to go and have their lunches, all to all their lunches together. And a lot of them didn't go on, well, my husband didn't go on the manor drop, but, but you, I don't know whether you knew about the manor drop. Yeah. Well, he didn't go because one of his friends was getting married and he wanted Bill to be best man, so they gave him, they gave them leave and they missed out on the manor drop, which he was unhappy about. He went to pick up prisoners of war, but he went a couple of times, you know, down to Italy and around there to pick up. He always said he had a swim in the Adriatic. <laughs> but we used to tell us a lot of uh, uh, tales, you know, and I had a son, uh, um, uh, my daughter had a, a son and a daughter and they had family so I got three, we got three great grandchildren and uh, my husband used to tell them about it and they were thrilled because one's 15, one's 10 and a great granddaughter is 13. Uh, they, we still, but they're in Queensland, and we still we, we hear from them and see them and that. But uh, without this one, I don't think I'd still be here. <laughs> yeah. So oh, we decided to come, seeing that this was a big opportunity, didn't we? So you've enjoyed today, have you? Very much. Very touching, and seeing the lake go over. I mean, seeing all the lakes go over to, uh, you know, through the wall. Yeah. They used to go over about eight o'clock at night and night bombing. And uh, what was it, the uh, bomb dam busters? Yeah. Well, I think when they were dropping those bombs, I think it was outside of Skegness where they, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I used to push back to Skegness. Well, it was flat. Oh, it was 16 or 20 miles of nothing on a push bike when it's flat the country. Yeah. That's... But it's a good. Good life we've had and um, happy, full of fun, parties. <laughs> what more can you ask? And no. thank God we'll be here today. So, so have you have you travelled especially from Australia to be here today? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's incredible, that is. Yeah, that's yeah. our reason we're here, just right. for this special 
That's, so, actually, that's absolutely incredible, that is, um, yeah. you know, to, well, to come back always, here. My husband always says I'd chase him 12,000 miles to marry him. So we decided we'd do the reverse and we'd come back here. Yeah. yeah. And we said we'd be, behave themselves up there today so it didn't rain. 